God is saying to you, I am coming to your life to make you happy and successful. Look to me continually for help, comfort, and companionship. Because I am always by your side, the briefest glance can connect you with me. When you look to me for help, it flows freely from my presence. This recognition of your need for me in small matters as well as in large ones keeps you spiritually alive. When you need comfort, I love to enfold you in my arms. I enable you not only to feel comforted, but also to be a channel through whom I comfort others. Thus you are doubly blessed, because a living channel absorbs some of whatever flows through it. My constant companionship is the pièce de résistance, the summit of salvation blessings. No matter what losses you experience in your life, no one can take away this glorious gift. Learn to appreciate difficult days. Be stimulated by the challenges you encounter along your way. As you journey through rough terrain with me, gain confidence from your knowledge that together we can handle anything. This knowledge consists of three parts. Your relationship with me, promises in the Bible, and past experiences of coping successfully during hard times. Look back on your life and see how I have helped you through difficult days. If you are tempted to think, yes, but that was then and this is now, remember who I am. Although you and your circumstances may change dramatically, I remain the same throughout time and eternity. This is the basis of your confi. In my presence you live and move and have your being. I am with you, watching over you constantly. I am Emmanuel, God with you. My presence enfolds you in radiant love. Nothing, including the brightest blessings and the darkest trials, can separate you from me. Some of my children find me more red eyely during dark times, when difficulties force them to depend on me. Others feel closer to me when their lives are filled with good things. They respond with thanksgiving and praise, thus opening wide the door to my presence. I know precisely what you need to draw nearer to me. Go through each day looking for what I have prepared for you. Accept every event as my hand-tailored provision for your needs. When you view your life this way, the most reasonable response is to be thankful. Do not reject any of my gifts. Find me in every situation. I am calling you to a life of constant communion with me. Basic training includes learning to live above your circumstances, even while interacting on that cluttered plane of life. You yearn for a simplified lifestyle, so that your communication with me can be uninterrupted. But I challenge you to relinquish the fantasy of an uncluttered world. Accept each day just as it comes and find me in the midst of it all. Talk with me about every aspect of your day, including your feelings. Remember that your ultimate goal is not to control or fix everything around you. It is to keep communicating with me. A successful day is one in which you have stayed in touch with me, even if many things remain undone at the end of the day. Do not let your to-do list, written or mental, become an idol directing your life. Instead, ask my spirit to guide you moment by moment. He will keep you close to me. I want to be central in your entire being. When your focus is firmly on me, my peace displaces fears and worries. They will encircle you, seeking entrance, so you must stay alert. Let trust and thankfulness stand guard, turning back fear before it can gain a foothold. There is no fear in my love, which shines on you continually. Sit quietly in my love. Light, while I bless you with radiant peace. 
Turn your whole being to trusting and loving me. Relax in my healing, holy presence. Be still while I transform your heart and mind. Let go of cares and worries so that you can receive my peace. Cease striving and know that I am God. Do not be like Pharisees who multiplied regular, creating their own form of godliness. They got so wrapped up in their own rules that they lost sight of me. Even today, man-made rules about how to live the Christian life enslave many people. Their focus is on their performance rather than on me. It is through knowing me intimately that you become like me. This requires spending time alone with me. Let go, relax, be still, and know that I am God. Remember that you live in a fallen world, an abnormal world tainted by sin. Much frustration and failure result from your seeking perfection in this life. There is nothing perfect in this world except me. That is why closeness to me satisfies deep yearnings and fills you with joy. I have planted longing for perfection in every human heart. This is a good desire, which I alone can fulfill. But most people seek this fulfillment in other people and earthly pleasures or achievements. Thus they create idols, before which they bow down. I will have no other gods before me. Make me the deepest desire of your heart. Let me fulfill your yearning for perfection. Welcome challenging times as opportunities to trust me. You have me beside you and my spirit within you, so no set of circumstances is too much for you to handle. When the path before you is dotted with difficulties, beware of measuring your strength against those challenges. That calculation is certain to rid you of anxiety. Without me, you wouldn't make it past the first hurdle. The way to walk through demanding days is to grip my hand tightly and stay in close communication with me. Let your thoughts and spoken words be richly flavored with trust and thankfulness. Regardless of the day's problems, I can keep you in perfect peace as you stay close to me. I want you to be all mine, filled with the light of my presence. I gave everything for you by living as a man, then dying for your sins and living again. Hold back nothing from me. Bring your most secret thoughts into the light of my love. Anything you bring to me I transform and cleanse from darkness. I know everything about you, far more than you know of yourself but I restrain my yearning to fix you, waiting instead for you to come to me for help. Imagine the divine restraint this requires, for I have all power in heaven and on earth. Seek my face with a teachable spirit. Come into my presence with thanksgiving, desiring to be transformed. I am creating something new in you, a bubbling spring of joy that spills over into others' lives. Do not mistake this joy for your own, or try to take credit for it in any way. Instead, watch in delight as my spirit flows through you to bless others. Let yourself become a reservoir of the spirit's fruit. Your part is to live close to me, open to all that I am doing to you. Don't try to control the streaming of my spirit through you. Just keep focusing on me as we walk through this day together. Enjoy my presence, which permeates you with love, joy, and peace. Let me help you get through this day. There are many possible paths to travel between your getting up in the morning and lying down at night. Stay alert to the many choice points along the way being continually aware of my presence. You will get through this day one way or the other. One way is to moan and groan, stumbling along with shuffling feet. This will get you to the end of the day eventually, but there is a better way. You can choose to walk with me along the path of peace, leaning on me as much as you need. 
There will still be difficulties along the way, but you can face them confidently in my strength. Thank me for each problem you encounter, and watch to see how I transform trials into blessings. When you approach me in stillness and in trust, you are strengthened. You need a buffer zone of silence around you in order to focus on things that are unseen. Since I am invisible, you must not let your senses dominate your thinking. The curse of this age is overstimulation of the senses, which blocks out awareness of the unseen world. The tangible world still reflects my glory. To those who have eyes that see and ears that hear, Spending time alone with me is the best way to develop seeing eyes and hearing ears. The goal is to be aware of unseen things even as you live out your life in the visible world. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Before time began, I knew you. For years you swam around in a sea of meaninglessness, searching for love, hoping for hope. All that time I was pursuing you, aching to embrace you in my compassionate arms. When the time was right, I revealed myself to you. I lifted you out of that sea of despair and set you down on a firm foundation. Sometimes you feel naked exposed to the revealing light of my presence. I wrapped an ermine robe around you, my robe of righteousness. I sang you a love song whose beginning and end are veiled in eternity. I infused meaning into your mind and harmony into your heart. Join me in singing my song. Together we will draw others out of darkness into my marvelous light. Stay on the high road with me. Many voices clamor for your attention, trying to divert you to another path. But I have called you to walk ever so closely with me, soaking in my presence, living in my peace. This is my unique design for you, planned before the world began. I have called each of my children to a different path, distinctly designed for that one. Do not let anyone convince you that his path is the only right way, and be careful not to extol your path as superior to another's way. What I require of you is to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with me wherever I lead. Learn to laugh at yourself more freely. Don't take yourself or your circumstances so seriously. Relax and know that I am God with you. When you desire my will above all else, life becomes much less threatening. Stop trying to monitor my responsibilities, things that are beyond your control. Find freedom by accepting the boundaries of your domain. Laughter lightens your load and lifts your heart into heavenly places. Your laughter rises to heaven and blends with angelic melodies of praise. Just as parents delight in the laughter of their children, so I delight in hearing my children laugh. I rejoice when you trust me enough to enjoy your life lightheartedly. Do not miss the joy of my presence by carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. Rather, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. My yoke is comfortable and pleasant. My burden is light and easily borne. I am the firm foundation on which you can dance and sing and celebrate my presence. This is my high and holy calling for you. Receive it as a precious gift. Glorifying and enjoying me is a higher priority than maintaining a tidy, structured life. Give up your striving to keep everything under control, an impossible task, and a waste of precious energy. My guidance for each of my children is unique. That's why listening to me is so vital for your well-being. Let me prepare you for the day that awaits you and point you in the right direction. I am with you continually, so don't be intimidated by fear. Though it stalks you, it cannot harm you, as long as you cling to my hand. Keep your eyes on me, enjoying peace in my presence. 
I speak to you continually. My nature is to communicate, though not always in words. I fling glorious sunsets across the sky, day after day after day. I speak in the faces and voices of loved ones. I caress you with a gentle breeze that refreshes and delights you. I speak softly in the depths of your spirit, where I have taken up residence. You can find me in each moment, when you have eyes that see and ears that hear. Ask my spirit to sharpen your spiritual eyesight and hearing. I rejoice each time you discover my presence. Practice looking and listening for me during quiet intervals. Gradually you will find me in more and more of your moments. You will seek me and find me when you seek me above all else. Let my love stream through you, washing away fear and distrust. A trusting response includes me in your thoughts as you consider strategize to deal with a situation. My continual presence is a promise, guaranteeing that you never have to face anything alone. My children teeth on the truth that I am always with them, yet they stumble around in a stupor, unaware of my loving presence all around them. How that grieves me. When you walk through a day in trusting depending on me, my aching heart is soothed. Gently bring your attention back to me whenever it wanders away. I look for persistence, rather than perfection, in your walk with me. Thank me for the very things that are troubling you. You are on the brink of rebellion, precariously close to shaking your fist in my face. You are tempted to indulge in just a little complaining about my treatment of you. But once you step over that line, torrents of rage and self-pity can sweep you away. The best protection against this indulgence is thanksgiving. It is impossible to thank me and curse me at the same time. Thanking me for trials will feel awkward and contrived at first. But if you persist, your thankful words, prayed in faith, will eventually make a differ in your heart. Thankfulness awakens you to my presence, which overshadows all your problems. Open your hands and your heart to receive this day as a precious gift from me. I begin each day with a sunrise, announcing my radiant presence. By the time you rise from your bed, I have already prepared the way before you. I eagerly await your first conscious thought. I rejoice when you glance my way. Bring me the gift of thanksgiving, which opens your heart to rich communion with me. Because I am God, from whom all blessings flow, thankfulness is the best way to draw near me. Sing praise songs to me. Tell of my wondrous works. Remember that I take great delight in you. I rejoice over you with singing. Stay calmly conscious of me today, no matter what. Remember that I go before you as well as with you into the day. Nothing takes me by surprise. I will not allow circumstances to overwhelm you, so long as you look to me. I will help you cope with whatever the moment presents. Collaborating with me brings blessings that far outweigh all your troubles. Awareness of my presence contains joy that can endure all eventualities. I speak to you continually. My nature is to communicate, though not always in words. I fling glorious sunsets across the sky, day after day after day. I speak in the faces and voices of loved ones. I caress you with a gentle breeze that refreshes and delights you. I speak softly in the depths of your spirit, where I have taken up residence. You can find me in each moment, when you have eyes that see and ears that hear. Ask my spirit to sharpen your spiritual eyesight and hearing. I rejoice each time you discover my presence. 
practice looking and listening for me during quiet intervals. Gradually you will find me in more and more of your moments. You will seek me and find me when you seek me above all else. I am the truth, the one who came to set you free. As the Holy Spirit controls your mind and actions more fully, you become free in me. You are increasingly released to become the one I created you to be. This is a work that I do in you as you yield to my spirit. I can do my best handiwork when you sit in the stillness of my presence, focusing your entire being on me. Let my thoughts burst freely upon your consciousness, stimulating abundant life. I am the way and the truth and the life. As you follow me, I lead you along paths of newness, ways you have never imagined. Don't worry about what is on the road up ahead. I want you to find your security in knowing me, the one who died to set you free. I am life and light in abundance. As you spend time soaking in my presence, you are energized and lightened. Through communing with me, you transfer your heavy burdens to my strong shoulders. By gazing at me, you gain my perspective on your life. This time alone with me is essential for unscrambling your thoughts and smoothing out the day before you. Be willing to fight for this precious time with me. Opposition comes in many forms. Your own desire to linger in bed. The evil one's determination to distract you from me. The pressure of family, friends, and your own inner critic to spend your time more produce. As you grow in your desire to please me above all else, you gain strength to resist these opponents. Delight yourself in me, for I am the deepest desire of your heart. Let me show you my way for you this day. I guide you continually so you can relax and enjoy my presence in the present. Living well is both a discipline and an art. Concentrate on staying close to me, the divine artist. Discipline your thoughts to trust me as I work my ways in your life. Pray about everything, then leave outcomes up to me. Do not fear my will, for through it I accomplish what is best for you. Take a deep breath and dive into the depths of absolute trust in me. Underneath are the everlasting arms. My children make a pastime of judging one another and themselves. But I am the only capable judge, and I have acquitted you through my own blood. Your acquittal came at the price of my unpar sacrifice. That is why I am highly offended when I hear my children judge one another or indulge in self-hatred. If you live close to me and absorb my word, the Holy Spirit will guide and correct you as needed. There is no condemnation for those who belong to me. When you worship me in spirit and truth, you join with choirs of angels who are continually before my throne. Though you cannot hear their voices, your praise and thanksgiving are distinctly audible in heaven. Your petitions are also heard but it is your gratitude that clears the way to my heart. With the way between us wide open, my blessings fall upon you in rich abundance. The greatest blessing is nearness to me abundant joy and peace in my presence. Practice praising and thanking me continually throughout this day. Draw near to me with a thankful heart, aware that your cup is overflowing with blessings. Gratitude enables you to perceive me more clearly and to rejoice in our love relationship. Nothing can separate you from my loving presence that is the basis of your security. Whenever you start to feel anxious, remind yourself that your security rests in me alone and I am totally trustworthy. You will never be in control of your life circumstances but you can relax and trust in my control. Instead of striving for a predictable, safe lifestyle, seek to know me in greater depth and breadth. 
I long to make your life a glorious adventure, but you must stop clinging to old ways. I am always doing something new within my beloved ones. Be on the lookout for all that I have prepared for you. I am your Father God. Listen to me. Learn what it means to be a child of the everlasting King. Your richest duty is devotion to me. This duty is such a joyous privilege that it feels like a luxury. You tend to feel guilty about pushing back the boundaries of your life to make space for time alone with me. The world is waiting to squeeze you into its mold and to crowd out time devoted to me. The ways of the world have also warped your conscience, which punishes you for doing the very thing that pleases me most, seeking my face. Listen to me above the clamor of voices trying to distract you. Ask my spirit to control your mind, for he and I work in perfect harmony. Be still and attentive in my presence. You are on holy ground. Trust me in all your thoughts. I know that some thoughts are unconscious or semi-conscious, and I do not hold you responsible for those. But you can direct conscious thoughts much more than you may realize. Practice thinking in certain ways, trusting me, thanking me, and those thoughts become more natural. Reject negative or sinful thoughts as soon as you become aware of them. Don't try to hide them from me. Confess them and leave them with me. Go on your way lightheartedly. This method of controlling your thoughts will keep your mind in my presence and your feet on the path of peace. Relax in my peaceful presence. Do not bring performance pressures into our sacred space of communion. When you are with someone you trust completely, you feel free to be yourself. This is one of the joys of true friendship. Though I am Lord of Lords and King of Kings, I also desire to be your intimate friend. When you are tense or pretentious in our relationship, I feel hurt. I know the worst about you, but I also see the best in you. I long for you to trust me enough to be fully yourself with me. When you are real with me, I am able to bring out the best in you, the very gifts I have planted in your soul. Relax and enjoy our friendship. Whenever you feel distant from me, whisper my name in loving trust. This simple prayer can restore your awareness of my presence. My name is constantly abused in the world, where people use it as a curse word. This verbal assault reaches all the way to heaven. Every word is heard and recorded. When you trustingly whisper, my name, my aching ears are soothed. The grating rancor of the world's blasphemies cannot compete with a trusting child's utterance, Jesus. The power of my name to bless both you and me is beyond your understanding. I want you to experience the riches of your salvation, the joy of being loved constantly and perfectly. You make a practice of judging yourself based on how you look or behave or feel. If you like what you see in the mirror, you feel a bit more worthy of my love. When things are going smoothly and your performance seems adequate, you find it easier to believe you are my beloved child. When you feel discouraged, you tend to look inward so you can core wrecked whatever is wrong. Instead of trying to fix yourself, fix your gaze on me, the lover of your soul. Rather than using your energy to judge yourself, redirect it to praising me. Remember that I see you clothed in my righteousness, radiant in my perfect love. Do not worry about tomorrow. This is not a suggestion, but a command. I divided time into days and nights so that you would have manageable portions of life to handle. My grace is suff for you, but its sufficiency is for only one day at a time. 
When you worry about the future, you heap day upon day of troubles onto your flimsy frame. You stagger under this heavy load, which I never intended you to carry. Throw off this oppressive burden with one quick thrust of trust. Anxious thoughts meander about and crisscross in your brain, but trusting me brings you directly into my presence. As you thus affirm your faith, shackles of worry fall off instantly. Enjoy my presence continually by trusting me at all times. Keep walking with me along the path I have chosen for you. Your desire to live close to me is a delight to my heart. I could instantly grant you the spiritual riches you desire, but that is not my way for you. Together we will forge a pathway up the high mountain. The journey is arduous at times, and you are weak. Someday you will dance light-footed on the high peaks, but for now, your walk is often plodding and heavy. All I require of you is to take the next step, clinging to my hand for strength and direction. Though the path is difficult and the scenery dull at the moment, there are sparkling surprises just around the bend. Stay on the path I have selected for you. It is truly the path of life. Come away with me for a while. The world, with its non-stop demands, can be put on hold. Most people put me on hold, rationalizing that someday they will find time to focus on me. But the longer people push me into the background of their lives, the harder it is for them to find me. You live among people who glorify busyness. They have made time a tyrant that controls their lives. Even those who know me as Savior tend to march to the tempo of the world. They have bought into the illusion that more is always better. More meetings, more programs, more activity. I have called you to follow me on a solitary path, making time alone with me your highest priority and deepest joy. It is a pathway largely unappreciated and often despised. However, you have chosen the better thing, which will never be taken away from you. Moreover, as you walk close to me, I can bless others through you. I am nearer than you think, richly present in all your moments. You are connected to me by love, bonds that nothing can sever. However, you may sometimes feel alone, because your union with me is invisible. Ask me to open your eyes so that you can find me everywhere. The more aware you are of my presence, the safer you feel. This is not some sort of escape from reality. It is tuning into ultimate reality. I am far more real than the world you can see, hear, and touch. Faith is the confirmation of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Rest in my presence when you need refreshment. Resting is not necessarily idleness, as people often perceive it. When you relax in my calm, you are demonstrating trust in me. Trust is a rich word laden with meaning and direction for your life. I want you to lean on, trust, and be confident in me. When you lean on me for support, I delight in your trusting confidence. Many people turn away from me when they are exhausted. They associate me with duty and dilly, so they try to hide from my presence when they need a break from work. How this saddens me. As I spoke through my prophet Isaiah, in returning to me and resting in me you shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be your strength. I am the light of the world. Men crawl through their lives cursing the darkness, but all the while I am shining brightly. I desire each of my followers to be a light bearer. The Holy Spirit who lives in you can shine from your face making me vis to people around you. 
Ask my spirit to live through you as you wend your way through this day. Hold my hand in joyful trust, for I never leave your side. The light of my presence is shining upon you. Brighten up the world by reflecting who I am. Find freedom through seeking to please me above all else. You can have only one master. When you let others' expectations drive you, you scatter your energy to the winds. Your own desire to look good can also drain your energy. I am your master, and I do not drive you to be what you are not. Your pretense displeases me, especially when it is in my service. Concentrate on staying close to me at all times. It is impossible to be inauthentic while you are focusing on my presence. Relax, and let me lead you through this day. I have everything under control. My control. You tend to peer anxiously into the day that is before you, trying to figure out what to do and when. Mean. While the phone or the doorbell rings, and you have to reshuffle your plans. All that planning ties you up in knots and distracts you from me. Attentiveness to me is not only for your quiet time, but for all your time. As you look to me, I will show you what to do now and next. Vast quantities of time and energy are wasted in obsessive planning. When you let me direct your steps, you are set free to enjoy me and to find what I have prepared for you this day. Hope is a golden cord connecting you to heaven. This cord helps you hold your head up high even when multiple trials are buffeting you. I never leave your side and I never let go of your hand. But with out the cord of hope, your head may slump and your feet may shuffle as you journey uphill with me. Hope lifts your perspective from your weary feet to the glow view you can see from the high road. You are reminded that the road we're traveling together is ultimately a highway to heaven. When you consider this radiant destination, the roughness or smoothness of the road ahead becomes much less significant. I am training you to hold in your heart a dual focus, my continual presence and the hope of heaven. Come to me continually. I am meant to be the center of your consciousness, the anchor of your soul. Your mind will wander from me, but the question is how far you allow it to wander. An anchor on a short rope lets a boat drift only slightly before the taut line tugs the boat back toward the center. Similarly, as you drift away from me, my spirit within you gives a tug, prompting you to return to me. As you become increasingly attuned to my presence, the length of rope on your soul's anchor is shortened. You wander only a short distance before feeling that inner tug telling you to return to your true center in me. Worship me in the beauty of holiness. I created beauty to declare the existence of my holy being, a magnificent rose, a hauntingly glorious sunset, oceanic splendor. All these things were meant to proclaim my presence in the world. Most people rush past these proclamations without giving them a second thought. Some people use beauty, especially feminine loveliness, to sell their products. How precious are my children who are awed by nature's beauty. This opens them up to my holy presence. Even before you knew me personally, you responded to my creation with wonder. This is a gift, and it carries responsibility with it. Declare my glorious being to the world. The whole earth is full of my radiant beauty, my glory. Trust me in the depths of your being. It is there that I live in constant communion with you. When you feel flustered and frazzled on the outside, do not get upset with yourself. You are only human, and the swirl of events going on all around you will sometimes feel overwhelming. 
Rather than scolding yourself for your humanness, remind yourself that I am both with you and within you. I am with you at all times, encouraging and sup, rather than condemning. I know that deep within you, where I live, my peace is your continual experience. Slow down your pace of living for a time. Quiet your mind in my presence. Then you will be able to hear me bestowing the resurrection blessing, Peace be with you. When Jesus finished commanding his twelve disciples, Oh, the bravery of God in trusting us. Do you say, But he has been unwise to choose me, because there is nothing good in me and I have no value. That is exactly why he chose you. As long as you think that you are of value to him, he cannot choose you, because you have purposes of your own to serve. But if you will allow him to take you to the end of your own self-sufficiency, then he can choose you to go with him to Jerusalem, Luke 18.31 and that will mean the fulfillment of purposes which he does not discuss with you. We tend to say that because a person has natural ability, he will make a good Christian. It is not a matter of our equipment, but a matter of our poverty, not of what we bring with us, but of what God puts into us, not a matter of natural virtues, of strength of character, of knowledge, or of experience, all of that, is of no avail in this concern. The only thing of value is being taken into the compelling purpose of God and being made his friends. See 1 Corinthians 1, 26, 31. God's friend, ship, is with people who know their poverty. He can accomplish nothing with the person who thinks that he is of use to God. As Christians, we are not here for our own purpose at all. We are here for the purpose of God, and the two are not the same. We do not know what God's compelling purpose is, but whatever happens, we must maintain our relationship with Him. We must never allow anything to damage our relationship with God, but if something does damage it, we must take the time to make it right again. The most important aspect of Christi is not the work we do, but the relationship we maintain and the surrounding influence and qualities produced by that relationship. That is all God asks us to give our attention to, and it is the one thing that is continually under attack. He said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. Luke 18.31 Jerusalem, in the life of our Lord, represents the place where he reached the culmination of his Father's will. Jesus said, One do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. John 5.30 Seeking to do the will of the Father was the one dominating concern throughout our Lord's life. And whatever he encountered along the way, whether joy or sorrow, success or failure, he was never deterred from that purpose. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Luke 9.51 The greatest thing for us to remember is that we go up to Jerusalem to fulfill God's purpose, not our own. In natural life, our ambitions are our own, but in the Christian life, we have no goals of our own. We talk so much today about our decisions for Christ, our determination to be Christians, and our decisions for this and that. But in the New Testament, the only aspect that is brought out is the compelling purpose of God. You did not choose me, but I chose you. John 15:16. We are not taken into a conscious agreement with God's purpose. We are taken into God's purpose with no awareness of it at all. We have no idea what God's goal may be. As we continue, His purpose becomes even more and more vague. God's aim appears to have missed the mark because we are too nearsighted to see the target at which He is aiming. 
At the beginning of the Christian life, we have our own ideas as to what God's purpose is. We say, God means for me to go over there, and God has called me to do this special work. We do what we think is right, and yet the compelling purpose of God remains upon us. The work we do is of no account when then paired with the compelling purpose of God. It is simply the scaffolding surrounding his work and his plan. He took the twelve aside. Luke 18.31 God takes us aside all the time. We have not yet 183 hent to know of the compelling purpose of God, and all things that are written by the prophets the Son of Man will be accomplished. But they understood none of these things. Luke 18.31, 34 Concerning God called Jesus Christ to what seemed an absolute disaster, and Jesus Christ called his disciples to see him put to death, leading every one of them to the place where their hearts were broken. His life was an absolute failure from every standpoint except God's. But what seemed to be a failure from man's standpoint was a triumph from God's standpoint, because God's purpose is never the same as man's purpose. This bewildering call of God comes into our lives as well. The call of God can never be understood absolutely or explained externally. It is a call that can only be perceived and understood internally by our true inner nature. The call of God is like the call of the sea. No one hears it except the person who has the nature of the sea in him. What God calls us to cannot be definitely stated because his call is simply to be his friend to accomplish his own purposes. Our real test is in truly believing that God knows what he desires. The things that happen do not happen by chance, they happen entirely by the decree of God. God is sovereignly working out his own purposes. If we are in fellowship and oneness with God and recognize that he is taking us into his purposes, then we will no longer strive to find out what his purposes are. As we grow in the Christian life, it becomes simpler, appler to us, because we are less inclined to say, I wonder why God allowed this or that. And we begin to see that the compelling purpose of God lies behind everything in life, and that God is divinely shaping us into oneness with that purpose. A Christian is someone who trusts in the knowledge and the wisdom of God, not in his own abilities. If we have a purpose of our own, it destroy the simplicity and the calm, relaxed pace which should be characteristic of the children of God. In that day, you will ask in my name. John 16:26. We too often think of the cross of Christ as something we have to get through, yet we get through for the purpose of getting into it. The cross represents only one thing for us, complete, entire, absolute identification with the Lord Jesus Christ, and there is nothing in which this identification is more real to us than in prayer. Your Father knows the things you need before you ask Him, Matthew 6, 8. Then why should we ask? The point of prayer is not to get answers from God, but to have perfect and complete oneness with Him. If we pray only because we want answers, we will become irritated and angry with God. We receive an answer every time we pray, but it does not always come in the way we expect and our spiritual irritation shows our refusal to identify ourselves truly with our Lord in prayer. We are not here to prove that God answers prayer, but to be living trophies of God's grace. I do not say to you that I shall pray to the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you. John 16, 26-27 have you reached such a level of intimacy with God that the only thing that can account for your prayer life 
is that it has become one with the prayer life of Jesus Christ? Has our Lord exchanged your life with His vital life? If so, then on that day, you will be so closely identified with Jesus that there will be no distinction. When prayer seems to be unanswered, beware of trying to place the blame on someone else. That is always a trap of Satan. When you seem to have no answer, there is always a reason. God uses these times to give you deep personal instruction, and it is not for anyone else but you. He departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. Matthew 11:11. 11, 11, he comes where he commands us to leave. If you stayed home when God told you to go because you were so concerned about your own people there, then you actually robbed them of the teaching of Jesus Christ himself. When you obeyed and left all consequences to God, the Lord went into your city to teach, but as long as you were disobedient, you blocked his way. Watch where you begin to debate with him and put what you call duty into competition with his commands. If you say, I know that he told me to go, but my duty is here, it simply means that you do not believe that Jesus means what he says. You learning about his ways. When Jesus finished commanding his twelve disciples, he teaches where he instructs us not to teach. Master, let us make three tabernacles. Luke 9.33 are we playing the part of an amateur providence, trying to play God's role in the lives of others? Are we so noisy in our instruction of other people that God cannot get near them? We must learn to keep our mouths shut and our spirits alert. God wants to instruct us regarding His Son, and He wants to turn our times of prayer into mounts of transfiguration. When we become certain that God is going to work in a particular way, He will never work in that way again. He works where He sends us to wait. Tarry until, Luke 24, 49. Wait on the Lord, and He will work, Psalm 37, 34. But don't wait sulking spiritually and feeling sorry for yourself just because you can't see one inch in front of you. Are we detached enough from our own spiritual fits of emotion to wait patiently for Him? 37.7 Waiting is not sitting with folded hands doing nothing, but it is learning to do what we are told. These are some of the facets of His ways that we rarely recognize. A prayer of faith in time of distress to the chief musician with stringed instruments on an eight-stringed harp, a psalm of David. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver me. O save me for your mercy's sake. 5. For in death there is no remembrance of you, in the grave who will give you thanks. 6. I am weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed swim, I drench my couch with my tears. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows old because of all my enemies. 8. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. 9. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and greatly troubled. Let them turn back and be ashamed suddenly. Please subscribe our YouTube channel to reach 50,000 divine subscribers very soon. Please share this video to your friends and family members and share super thanks. Type Amen to affirm. Thanks for watching.